We continue with the NSAS conversation. The International Criminal Court ICC has disclosed that it is conducting a preliminary investigation into the recent protests in Nigeria. In a statement, the office of the ICC prosecutor said it had received information on alleged crimes. It promised to assess whether the legal criteria for opening an investigation under the Rome statute were met. The International Court plans to make preliminary finance public. And uh, we're, of course, joined this morning by our analyst, Ezekiel Nye Talk, to help analyze uh, what this portends. Thank you for being with us uh, this morning on The Breakfast. My pleasure and privilege. Thanks so much for having me. All right, I'm going to start with asking about uh, something that was mentioned, the uh, Rome Statute. Um, the, of course, um, process for investigation and um, the requirements for investigation, um, of course, always have to follow with the Rome Statute. So I, I want your thoughts on if... Um, some of the details of what has happened in the last few weeks uh, fall in line with the things that require an investigation from the ICC? Um, first, you may need to have a little bit of a background into this whole ICC matter. After the Second World War, um, a group of um, people were brought together to think of how we can evolve what we call a new world order where... Um, there could be peace around the world generally because they discovered that even far back that the world was getting so interwoven one with another. So that when this group of people came up with very, very far-reaching, um, out-of-the-box thinking, and um, it was rejected by the establishment completely. But this came up to become what gave rise to things like the World Bank, you know, the World Health Organization, all the global bodies, and of course the ICC uh, fallout from that International Criminal Court. Now, the reason is that we've come to realize that what happens in one country affects the rest of the world. Like I said, that was the background. So, um, and one of the things that the ICC uh, comes and um, takes really serious is you know, cases of genocide, you know, and um, human rights are abuses at certain levels. Now, that is like a little bit of a background to what happened. And there are certain things that fall in within what you may call genocide, you know. And, um, and uh, what happened in, uh, at Lekki uh, some weeks back falls definitely into that group. Maybe as we advance the conversation, we'll be able to look into one or two more details that I think we really, as a country, uh, need to know that the time is up. You just can't do anything and hope to get away with it. It's not going to happen. All right. Uh, the, the body has said they're just acknowledging that they've received um, uh, an inquiry to make investigation into um, the protests in Nigeria. The worry is, of what relevance is it? They're supposed to come in if the nation is unable, that's my understanding, if the, if the nation is unable to address the situation as it stands. The federal government has set up panels of inquiry at the state and federal level. There are sittings across the country where these um, matters occur uh, to find out what needs to be done. So of what relevance really is this um, request to the ICC at this time? Um, between us, if I may say so, unfortunately can't quite be between us because you are in over 30, almost 40 African countries. So this is not exactly between us. But I think that the time has come when we need to know the image that we're projecting before the world and the fact that the world is watching the world is watching do they take us serious unfortunately our leadership has made it such that even nigerians don't believe you if nigerians don't believe you how will the international community take you serious and these people are really down on taking very decisive actions on human rights abuses as a result Though the federal government has promptly um, put up all the panels, you know, 
But uh, one must be careful, and they, not one, they must be careful to know that they are watching every action, every step of the way. Now, look at this, number one. The military has said, oh, we have our prosecution or our inquiry protocols. Uh, we will have to um, look into the cases ourselves. And if we find the people wanting, we are going to court martial them. If we um, uh, court martial them and then, of course, eventually turn them over to the long arm of the law, if we don't have anything against them, uh, we are going to, um, of course, let them be. But this is in a situation where the military had already started by saying we were never involved in the very, very, very first instance. And they, it got to be that they were involved. And now they are saying, oh, we are going to do our inquiries ourselves. Now, these people are going to look at, no, they don't just jump into matters. Like they said, the first thing is that we've received the report. That's part one. Part two is that we are looking into the report. That's the part that, look at what they're showing on the screen. How could, these guys didn't know that the world has changed. That's captured. If they had thought about it, they would, before they made the very initial response, they would have said, look, this is more than being captured on camera. So the question is, how do we do damage control? But they just forget that the world has gone global and that technology is the new normal, you know? So they said nothing happened. So number one, there was that um, denial and that was a red flag. Number two, they said we're going to do it ourselves and that's another red flag. The question is for the ICC, their main concern is have the people gotten justice? If the answer is yes, in which case the country has taken um, care of the situation, they've done it transparently, those who are uh, culpable are, are brought to book. Once that is done, the case is closed. But if you think for anything in the world that you're going to play games on this, uh, we, 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 are, we are in for a rough ride, uh, or they are in for a rough ride. All right. Um, um, some other thing that I would ask is, um, yes, yesterday, um, I listened to an interview with uh, Chile Eboe Osuji, the uh, current president of the uh, International Criminal Court, a Nigerian. Um, and um, the, there was a, a lot of questions that were asked about the credibility and the strength of the ICC as it stands, the lack of uh, support from the United States also uh, to the ICC. Um, do you think that the ICC currently has enough um, of the pressure that it should have to put the Nigerian government on its toes, um, considering also the president of the ICC is a Nigerian? Two things. The very first thing is that the fact that the president is a Nigerian is, is, uh, is a cause for concern. The reason is that when you occupy such a position, you want to show as much as possible that you are not biased. You want to show that you are upright. You want to show that you are a global citizen that does not take sides. So you find yourself killing a fly with a sledgehammer. That's number one. So, and anything short of that, I think that man will find himself. Because everybody's like, you know, normally they would like say, they would, they would like um, pepper the cracks. But because you are a Nigerian, and because Nigeria is involved, and because there's no seat where you don't have people competing for your seat, they are like watching every word, every move, every step he makes, you know, either to discredit him or to get him out or one thing or the other. I mean, it's, it's an, an exalted and elevated seat. So my advice to him is, please don't bring in Nigerian factor because you know the people you are dealing with. Number two, without America, the world is moving on. And secondly, I, I, many things are going to change as from, <laughs> let me not say yesterday, as soon as the American result comes out. Two things. If Trump wins, you are going to see a completely different Trump. Trump is a businessman. Trump is, 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 is an entrepreneur. He's a strategist. First, he needed a second term. So he played to his base to get the second term. Trump now is going to exit, and he's going to exit as a world leader, a global figure. So a lot of his activities 
are going to change towards his new vision, his new dream, which incidentally and unfortunately might be, might be selfish, which is to come out and be the world Trump because before he had to be the America Trump so as to get a second term. I see his policy shifting a little bit. And I also foresee a situation where he also wants to no, make, leave America on a stronger note. So I see him having a lot of interplays and relationships with um, the other world bodies. I don't well, see him right. getting isolated. Aside, now, if uh, he wins. Um, On the other hand, if Biden wins, oh Lord, everything changes. Yeah, so, so, so eight or ten, Mr. Mr. The yeah, ICC talk. is on a good note. Yes. Uh, aside the Donald Trump and Joe Biden per perspective, one of the yeah. things that the ICC has also been burdened with over time is yeah. its seemingly lack of powers to um, uh, convict some of the persons that have been put on trial at the ICC, mostly because of lack of, lack of cooperation from the countries that uh, these persons are from. If you look through the records of the ICC, there's not you know, so many people that have uh, been tried and been convicted and been sent to jail. Um, so should that you know, be enough comfort for whoever is being investigated in Nigeria? I'll tell you this. Far from it. Far from it. What you need is evidence. Overwhelming evidence. Before now, the ICC has had it rough or challenging for you to put up a convincing, foolproof evidence. Being able to get witnesses, being able to do the due diligence, because... I mean, they want to know that anybody that is put out, I mean, they can beat their chest and say, yes, we've got everything wrapped up. Today, the social media, not the social media, IT has made life amazing for this. And number two, above all, this is not just about a country. This is primarily about a people that you have found to be thinking three steps ahead of you. These young people are thinking they are always three steps ahead. You will be shocked that before that day, they had had an arrangement with Google to be, you'll be amazed at the level of evidence that will come out at the Hague. Things that are just not disputable. They will show how that truck left from one point and the timeline what, 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 what the Human Rights Commission was saying sounds speculative, but I can assure you that the, these people would have had this arrangement made before time. These are young people. These, these, are, these are technology survey people. These are people who are living in the times. We are just trying to catch up with the times. We're just trying to understand what's going on. There are so many steps ahead of us. Mr. So um, maybe I'm not really getting it. I, I, I want to ask you the yeah. import, you know, once we hear stuff, oh, we want to go to the ICC, of yeah. what, what, what kind of sanctions will they be able to, what, 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 of what impact would their ruling be to the affairs of this country as it affects the matter that is going to be brought, that's being um, brought before them? Of what impact is it going to be? Can they, in terms of sanction, can they sanction Nigeria? Two things. Of course, number one is that somebody has been jailed, not one, not two, Charles Tello. I mean, what happened to him and not the, uh, this, this, uh, this, this president, his name just keeps my mind now. But aside from that, you know what these people are doing, all these young people are doing? They are networking the case and building from different fronts. Now, there are countries that are still with the ICC. And once the ICC establishes a case against not necessarily a country, it's individuals, if you look at it. Because, I mean, Nigeria did not do what human beings did. And the court does not work with countries like that. They work with individuals. And what is going to happen is that certain culpable individuals from the top to the bottom are going to be picked. And these people, the moment that not part one, 
they are indicted by the ICC. The second part is that so many countries are going to blacklist these people. And these are people, many of them, some of them are, I believe, people who have stashed away a lot of lootings and stuff outside the country, their families and everything. And the moment, I know, I, I heard the chief of our minister of grandstanding and said, they can ban us, we'll stay in Nigeria and fix Nigeria. I wish that was the case. I really wish that was the case. But I would like to look at the man and believe that all his family members are here in Nigeria. Let me say a little thing before we leave here that I think is very instructive. There was a man called Dr. Alex Ekweme, architect Dr. Alex Ekweme. He was a vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The moment he was made a vice president, you know what he said? He said, I cannot be a vice president of this country and all my children are abroad. He brought all his children that were schooling abroad back to Nigeria. I say this decisively because I'm a very close family friend of the man. He brought his children back into Nigeria. I am the vice president. And the educational system, if it's not good enough for my children, is not good enough for Nigeria. So right. I want to see these leaders who are saying, let them ban us. We stay back in Nigeria and fix Nigeria. They shouldn't wait until they are banned. They should actually bring their whole family, bring their investment back to Nigeria. Where they fail to do that, Nigerians are going to, Nigerian youth are going to pursue the case and make sure that the moment that they are indicted at ICC, the whole of their family, the whole of them are going to be sanctioned internationally. All right, now, before we let you go, um, I, I want to yeah. go back to something you said earlier. Um, not just you, our previous guests also expressed the dissatisfaction with uh, the panel of inquiry that has been set up across the country. Um, my question would be, to, in order to ward off um, going, needing the ICC to help us address our issues, um, how must the government uh, go about reviewing the panel of inquiry or setting up a fresh one or something um, to Just ensure thing. justice Just for the people? One thing, sincerity of purpose at all. Sincerity of purpose. Don't play games with these young people. They are miles ahead of you. You see, the moment our leaders come to terms with the fact that the young people are not the lazy youth that we think they are. This is not those jobless youth. No, 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 no. I, 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 I have some, some of the most enterprising young people who are doing so well. My son, what could you could you explain? Classmate. Sorry, we're, we're time constrained. Yeah. In, could you could yeah. you explain when you said sincerity of purpose? Um, what ways can we see the sincerity of purpose in this panel of inquiry? Because for now, there are concerns about you know the mode of questioning. Uh, they are concerned about you know prolonged uh, continuous adjournment of the sittings and other issues and what constitutes the panel. Uh, that's I mean, you, you sincerity of how can they go about this to bring that you, sincerity of purpose you refer? Each, each of the panel members is either a youth or father to a youth or mother to a youth, and they all go back home at the end of the day. They vent their frustrations to their children, to their words, and this is brought back. That's why they say they have no leadership. This is brought back to the... They, they, these people are not giving free hand to operate. The level of threat, level of calls, the level of intimidation. You better leave this thing. Be careful. Don't try to be a martyr. You know how people just use words to try or don't try to be a savior. Don't try to act too holy. And So the level of pressure that is being meted on these people is vented back home to the children and the children report it back to their peers. So the fact is that these people are not given a free hand. It doesn't matter whose ox is God. We want to get to the root of the problem. Whoever does it, the crime has got to pay. They do the time, you know. So these people are, are, are not free. They are not, they are not, they are encumbered. They are encumbered. You and this is what brings about lack of transparency. And so this, like, the young people are like, uh-oh, same old, same old. We're not, being, we're not being taken for granted. 
So I, I think that from the body language, from things, there the, the isn't the boldness for the panel members to hit the ground running and then get okay. the answers. I think that they are still under a lot of, I, I personally, my personal opinion, Ezekiel, that they, are, they, they need to be free. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, always interested in hearing your perspective on uh, these issues. Thanks once again. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I would also, you know, have enjoyed hearing sincerity of purpose to the Constitution, to justice, to truth, uh, to um, um, just justice, well, basically. Sincerity of, besides, purpose, you know, their sincerity of purpose is, in quotes, sincerity mm. of purpose, because, I mean... Um, I'm, I'm talking aside, you know, their kids at home, you know, some of them might be single parents um, or not, not even have, also might, might not even have any kids. No, but I'm another actually, thing... I'm actually referring to his, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm always thinking, what would be the solution? What would be the way forward? If we are unhappy with the constitution of these panel, whether we like it or not, dialogue must be a part of the process to back to peace. I agree. So if we are unhappy with the constitution of the panel, then we must make contributions on how we can improve on the quality of the people and the findings that come from this panel. I mean, the panel members are part of the society. They must be hearing from people now expressing concern over their handling of the process so far. So if they are truly committed to the process of ensuring people that have been affected get justice, they will listen to the comments coming from people like our guests who are expressing reservation about Some other how thing they're going that about I, it. I'm also worried about is the office of the prosecutor of uh, the ICC um, is has the authority basically to probe uh, cases brought before it by an individual, by a group, or by a state, or can, um, of course, look into certain things by itself even without a petition. Um, I want to know why this is different from what happened with the Shiites in 2015. I don't remember the ICC stepping in then to investigate the alleged murder of more than 300 Nigerians back then. Um, so what makes this particular case different? Why is the ICC more interested in this one than what happened at that time? And other cases that, of course, have, have uh, occurred in the country in the last few years. And, and, I mean, and there, there is a marked difference time. between the um, group you mentioned and the generality of Nigeria. The, the, nobody deserves any sort of injustice. That's a firm fact. But this affected every single youth in this country. So the risk, you know, I, I, I'm They're not holding, different. The Shites aren't different. From, I'm not saying that they're different. Every percent. group should matter. But you, no. uh, I'm just trying to make sense of, you know, saying why should it go to the ICC? Somebody wrote a petition to them. They didn't just invite themselves. So maybe somebody should have written a petition to them. On the case of the IM, uh, IMN, I, you know, if that wasn't done and then somebody writes about this, it, it still should... Um, you know, like, like I said, like the I said they, they either wait for um, petitions or for invitations from an individual group or state or they step in yeah. themselves. So they have the authority to also step in without being invited. Okay. So why didn't they in 2015 and why now? And it's not trying to weigh one atrocity against the other. You know, it's, it's really just trying to open up a conversation about um, how scared should Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian government be of you know, the ICC. Well, um, at, at the, the moment, the I, I'm, I'm not holding for, for, for them, but uh, I, I really think that so long as efforts is being um, expended, we should, should focus on getting it right other than running to people um, or the uh, international courts to sort out problems for us. That's just Absolutely. my two cents on the matter. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.